and your final example of changing an economic world, I, when you compare, you have to compare your NED case study of Nigeria to a HIC case study. In this case, we do the UK. The things you need to know about the UK is that globalization has led to, um, in, we industrialized in the, in the industrial revolution. We had about 75% of people working in the, in the primary sector in, 19, in 1800, moved to 55% by um I moved to the secondary sector, 55% in 1900. And then with cheap labor and rent in other countries and the rise of globalization and um, transport, lots of these industries moved and uh, led to something called deindustrialization. That's all down to globalization, making it easier and cheaper to do businesses abroad. Uh, the key government policies that have existed were um, nationalization, government run state industries um, before the 1980s, after the Second World War, and then post 19, in from 1980s onwards, privatization that happened uh, with uh, the conservative governments of Margaret Thatcher, etc., where state owned companies like British Rail, British Steel, British Gas, uh, British Petroleum, which is now BP, um, they all, were all sold off. Okay. Um, in the UK, one of the reasons, um, uh, we kind of one way in which to deal with uh, deindustrialization is that the country's invested heavily, heavily, heavily in um, in um, the IT and tertiary sector, so IT and quaternary research, as well as as tertiary sectors such as services. So. Um, for example, 10% of UK's GDP employs over 2 million people is in the tertiary sector. 1.3 million people work in the IT sector. That's only going to grow. Okay. Um, the good example here, and there's, I've made a few typos here, but the good example is at the Cambridge Science Park or the University of Southampton Science Park. High skilled graduates providing niche 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 research in um, in um, in really high end facilities. You've also got uh, business parks as well as university science parks. A good example of our push as a, as a country towards um, a post industrial economy. Um, it's led to it's led to sort of complete change in rural life in the UK. You've got some parts of uh, the UK where you see population decline. Out to Hebrides in Scotland, number of school children has plummeted. So if close, uh, schools have closed, services have closed, shops have closed down. There's more young people moving away from jobs. Uh, and then you've got other rural areas like South Cambridgeshire where migrant workers increased by 25%. Uh, you've got um, more old people and a lot of people move, move to South Cambridgeshire because it's closer to London because it's close to one of the best universities in the world, Cambridge Science Park. So it's a rural area which has significant pull factors, whereas Outer Hebrides is an urban area, rural area, sorry, with significant push factors. Okay. Um, changing transport infrastructure. The four things you need to learn about are roads, rails, ports, and airports. The main road improvement is the Southwest Super Highway, which is a two billion pound road project that's widening the road that goes via Stonehenge. Uh, you've got a railway improvement, HS2, 50 billion pounds and, uh, and growing uh, bill for a high speed rail connect to London to Southwest, uh, Northwest, sorry, Manchester via Birmingham. You've got a picture of its plan over here. HS1 exists. It's the railway that takes people from the international, uh, St. Pancras International in London to Brussels and Paris with the Eurostar. Um, in doing so, it'll shrink the North a south divide they want to develop ports so liverpool got a mass uh, liverpool got a massive investment of about 300 million pounds for its uh port uh at Redland green we also learn about the london gateway project which is uh in the harbour we've also th obviously look at airports and heathrow's expansion the impact of the sec of the new runway and the cost of around 20 million a billion pounds okay air pollution issues but brings a huge amount of business um, we also look at the North-South divide, which is the biggest gap between the UK uh, in the UK. So a way of shrinking the North-South divide is to improve uh, local enterprise partnerships between local companies, uh, local businesses and councils. You get enterprise zones to encourage investment. You can see there uh, that uh, as in in, um, in in Northeast, um, they're trying to improve the investment in um, offshore wind farms, etc., to boost in, um, investment uh, in northern areas. So BBC moving to Salford um, in Manchester is a good example of that. Okay, and then obviously the last thing you need to know about the UK is the UK's relationship with the wider world. Um, electronic communication means that we can work abroad much uh, from a, uh, with abroad much easier with internet. Uh, we've got one of the best internet connections in the world. Transport, we've got one of the busiest airports in the world in Heathrow. Culturally, the UK's got a TV, incredible TV industry, film industry. We've got football with the Premier League. We've got lots of sport that attracts the rest of the world. Think about London 2012 Olympics, etc. And trade, well, the big one is the word no one likes to discuss in the UK is Brexit. We're in or out doesn't really change the fact that it's completely revolutionised our relationship with uh, Europe, the European Union and the rest of the world. Um, it's led to complete change in uh, production lines, etc. So it's kind of, it's made our trade with Europe harder than it previously was, okay?